Hi everyone, so in this video you're going to be witnessing mine and Dylan's chest training and we're looking through a position from our guards excelling at chest calculation. So feel free to stop the video to give the position a go yourself. Okay, enjoy the video. Okay, great. So, uh, way to play and win. Uh, before you can think, you must learn how to see. That is the name of chapter one of Agad's book, and this is the final position of chapter one. So, uh, yeah, have a think. Well, the first thing I notice is that if I take Black's queen on e7 with the rook, then um, Black's best move would be uh, knight takes d5 with a fork, and after king e5, knight takes e7, and white's going to win the c-pawn, um, it appears. Maybe even not. Maybe not. I mean, how would white ever win the C pawn? Yeah, I'm just noticing that the knight never has to move since it's defended. Right. So yeah, I guess in that position, if um, black is allowed to bring his king in, then we have nothing. Okay, so now I'm looking at queen takes g8, <clears throat> uh, knight takes g8, and rook takes e7. Um, and after knight takes e7, um, king e5, knight takes g6 maybe, and then we have king d6, and we will win the c-pawn, and it's a matter of whether black can stop the promotion of our c-pawn. I'm wondering whether there's anything better than knight takes g6, probably is. And now I'm looking at king g7, um, and instead of the natural looking uh, king d6, what if king e6, which shoulders the black king? So now the black king can't come to the defense of the knight, knight has to move. So now if knight takes g6, now we go knight d6, and we're winning the pawn. Um, and it's a matter of whether black has any resources to stop the promotion. Right. Uh, before analyzing 2d, try to not make any assumptions about moves that either side have to play. You mean try to so find I think it what? Early, early. Earlier in that continuation, yeah. um, Black had a better move. I guess there's knight d5, which prepares to bring the knight behind, behind uh, on b4, which is a very good defense, defensive um, posture for that knight. Yeah, and the point is that you ever get into a position where the black king is on g7 and the white king is defending on s5, uh, white will find itself <clears throat> in zone five, exactly, yeah. um, where it has to move and then black can take the pawn. And if it were black's turn in that position, then black can just move the knight. So, um, yeah, the evaluation of uh, this line is actually that black is winning. Well, if we don't have king e5, then maybe this whole queen takes g8 idea isn't working. It'd be shocking if there was a move better than king e5 in that position. Does g7 do anything at all? Well, and if we go down the same line after having sacrificed the g6 pawn, then technically we're not tied to the defense of it, of it anymore because uh, we've sacked it. <laughs> Uh, That's one way to look at it. <laughs> you can't lose a pawn if you've already lost it. Exactly. Yeah. I, this is making me question my, my queen sack, which is a healthy thing, I suppose. I think it's definitely good to be thinking along, like, like thinking of creative ideas that don't rule anything out. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I was looking at rook takes g8 as well, but <clears throat> after knight takes g8, uh, I don't know, queen takes d6, the queens are still on the board, and the... I feel like things are way less sharp and forcing now, mm. which is not something Agard would have shown. <laughs> is that a valid uh, observation? <laughs> it's a valid observation, I'm not sure how useful it is for your chess, but no ask that. Um, okay, let's stick with rook takes g8 for a second. So. If rook takes g8, knight takes g8, uh, what moves do we have? Okay, so we can force an endgame after queen e5. 
Queen e5, he has to take our queen. <clears throat> so the plan is after king takes e5. Uh, tell me the move for white, sorry. So yeah, king g7. King d6. So the black takes on g6. Uh, king takes e6. Uh, king takes on g5. Yeah, and this is a draw, yeah. And why do we know it's a draw? Because the knight uh, is going to be able to sack itself for the pawn. Uh, yeah. And the other lesson that we learned uh, before with knight and pawn endgames is that if the knight is controlling the c8 square to the square of the queen square, then even if the black king was all the way on h1, uh, it's still a draw. Because the white king yeah. can never yeah. push the knight away. The knight is able to stop the pawn. Right. With uh, rook takes g8, knight takes g8, and queen e5. You're definitely missing one more idea that should definitely be considered. So, in, the, in the rook takes g8 line? Yeah. So take another look. Oh, well, I mean, there's queen h1 check. Okay, how does that go? Okay, yeah, I haven't considered this. That looks sufficient for a draw as well after rook takes g8, knight takes g8, queen h1 check. King g7, um, and we don't have anything if uh, queen h7 check isn't working, and after um, king f8, then g7, king f7, um, king can come to f8 because the knight's hanging, uh, or sorry, e8. Um, yeah. And if the queen takes, I mean, Queen takes is possible too, and I think that endgame is still drawing. So maybe there's no need to look any further than that. Okay, so Queen H1 doesn't work as well. Funnily enough, there's still one more idea in the position that you haven't even considered. Uh, queen D4 check? Uh, I guess that's another move, so let's consider <laughs> Now after Queen D4 check, uh, Queen G7 holds. Yeah, I don't think there's anything there. Yeah. Really weird how you're not seeing this move. Well, uh, I have quite an epic blind spot for this move then. You do indeed. Before you can think, you must learn how to see. Ah, you, you just said that, and then I saw it. <laughs> Rook takes g8, uh, knight takes g8, and queen f7. Queen f7? And what's the threat? Uh, if you do nothing, I'm going to capture your king. Uh, okay, never I mean, mind. No, he's not in check. No. He's uh, not in check. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The queen doesn't move in the shape of a knight. I should <laughs> could tell you that. There's no way black's in Zeus one here. Come on. Does black have to take the queen? If the queen wasn't on the seventh rank, then we have checkmate. Yeah, exactly. We have queen h7, mate. Um, so it looks like game over. Except it's not. So find the rec find the defense. Oh, queen f8. Queen f8. Whoa. Okay. I... Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, all in all, this line is still a draw. But two I'll give is that this theme is still relevant in some ways. So, back to the start position and think again. Oh, what if after queen takes g8, knight takes g8, there's rook h7, and now the queen has to sack itself on h7. I mean, that also looks drawn for the same reasons as in the previous lines, where knight just gets to e7, and uh, if needed, there's knight d5, knight b4. Queen f7 allows queen e4 check. Now to queen e4, what move is... Uh, king g3. Yeah, king g3 fourth, and what can black play? Oh, uh, knight h5 check, taking up the rook. Yep. I might need a clue, because I... Well, you can think, you must learn how to see. I thought the magic might work again. Well, now, after you said that, I started considering rook f7. <laughs> In what line? Um, Queen 
queen takes g8, knight takes g8, and rook f7. Okay, so keep thinking. Yeah, that's interesting. Because <laughs> uh, the knight has nowhere to go. Well, if black has to move the knight, then we're going to take the queen. Uh, and if the queen moves... Oh, <laughs> rook h7, rook h7. Yeah. yeah, we got mate in one pattern, just like when the queen was on f7. Okay. And the okay. point is, the defense with queen uh, f8. Uh, it's just Sug Swang. Okay. Okay, so queen f8 isn't stalemate, so we don't have that trick. But what is black's best defense? I don't see how, how black can try to prepare any stalemate ideas at all. Uh, stalemate part of the team? Uh, knight f6. Threatening ninety five. What about I did? Sorry. Threatening ninety five. Exactly. So knight has six. Um. What should white play? I'm thinking pawn takes. F six. G takes F six. Uh, G takes F six. And if black plays queen takes C five. Well, we could try rook H seven, king G eight, and F seven. Well, so you're saying rook h8, check, king g7. Oh, um, rook g8. Rook g8. And Protecting now... the rook, deflecting the king. So, what's the verdict? So after, like, king f6, then we promote, and we're up a rook. Okay. <laughs> I did it. That's good. Um... So uh, basically the next chapter of our guard is going to be candidate moves. But I think this opening chapter was just making the point that visualization is really important. Like if you don't consider um, like the queen s7 uh, idea, and then uh, if you don't spot the queen f8 uh, defense, and then Using those ideas, then you can it can help you find the rook f7 idea, which would be much harder to yeah, spot. Yeah, so many of those lines uh, are so close to winning for white that they'd just be any one of them could be super tempting to go down in a real game. Yeah, exactly. Calculation is key. Hey everyone, it's Dylan. Uh, so that's the end of this exercise. Thanks for slogging through it with me. Uh, it did take me way longer than is evident. Uh, in this video, thanks to the editing process, but uh, I'm going to quickly go through the moves here just so you can uh, see it visually from start to finish. If you enjoyed this um, kind of content uh, and would like to see more, let us know by uh, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.